This is the first section in chapter three, flows and networks one. And this section is about flows in networks. Now, the first thing is that this type of graph is called a capacitated digraph or a capacitated directed graph. Now, we know that uh, a digraph or a directed graph has arrows on the arcs showing the direction of that arc or edge. So this shows the direction in which the arc goes. It can't go back the other way. And capacitated just means that each arc has a capacity. So you could imagine this, for example, as like water pipes all connected together, where we have the source of the water here. So we normally use S here. This would what we call the source. And the one at the end, we usually use letter T. This is what we call the sink. So everything comes out of the source, like a, a tap, and ends up in, in a sink. OK, so yeah, these tell us the direction of the flow of water, for example. And these numbers represent the capacity. How much water, what's the maximum amount of water or liquid, or it could be electricity, or it could be um, a internet network, something like that. What's the maximum capacity of each one of these arcs here? So for example, arc AB has a maximum capacity of 14. Now, another way that we can identify the source and the sink is that the source, all the arcs are directed away from S. So you can see that here in the source, all the edges are directed away from it. And the sink, all the edges are directed towards it. All the other nodes here, you will have some edges that are directed towards and away, but only in the source will you have all the edges directed away from it. And only in the sink will you have all the edges directed or arcs directed toward it. Now, besides capacity, we have something called flow. And the flow of an arc is the amount flowing through an arc at any one time. Now, this flow has to be positive. It can be zero, but it can't be negative. But it must also be less than or equal to the capacity now let's take this arc here, SA for example, it has a capacity of 10. That means the maximum flow that it can be is 10. I can write down what the flow is at a particular time. Let's just make a number up, let's put eight. And we put that in a circle, which means although this has a capacity of 10, at one particular moment in time, we've only got a flow of eight. So it's not at its full capacity. Now, if the flow equals the capacity, so let's say, for example, this wasn't eight, but this was 10. Where the flow equals the capacity, then the arc is said to be saturated. It's full in a way. But the way that we show the flow is by these circles. As I said, it can't be negative. It can't be more than the capacity. It needs to be somewhere between the two. So let's just put some numbers here. Let's say the flow of that was seven and the flow of this was five flow of this might be zero and so on. Now, the flow of a network must satisfy two conditions. One is called the feasibility condition and the other the conservation condition. Now, the feasibility condition means that the flow along each arc cannot exceed its capacity. Now, we said that before. So here is a flow of seven uh, in this arc here, SA. It cannot exceed 10. It can be up to a maximum of 10 so that this arc here is saturated, but it cannot exceed 10. So that's the feasibility condition. The second condition, the conservation condition, is that the total flow into a vertex equals the total flow out of a vertex. Now we're not talking about the capacity, we're talking about the flow. So for example, here, we have marked these two um, arcs here so that the total flow into um, A is seven. So we've got seven there, we've got zero there, it's flowing in. That means that the total flow out must also be seven. So for example, I could have four flowing out of this one and three flowing out of this one. So now it satisfies this conservation uh, condition and also the feasibility condition because none of these flows exceed the capacity of the arcs. Now, if we need to calculate the value of a flow, this is equal to the sum of all the flows leaving the source, which is equal to the sum of all the flows going into the sink. 
So this example here, the value of the flows leaving the source, 7 plus 5 is 12. That will equal the um, value of the flows going into the sink. So if I were to write those numbers on, I would just need to make sure that um, these two arcs also add up to 12. So I might have 6 here and 6 here, for example. So the value of this flow in this particular example would be 12. Example one, the diagram shows a capacitated directed network. In part A, we need to write down the value of the arcs DF and BE. So I can see here that C is my source, E is my sink. As I said, we'd normally uh, write these using S and T. So if I look at the arc DF, then DF is here, just highlight that, and I can see that its capacity is two. So this is not its flow, this is capacity. Capacity would be written as a number in a circle. And arc BE, so we'll just highlight BE, which is here. And BE, I can see, has a capacity of nine. So we'll move on to part B. Now part B says state the source vertex. So the source vertex is going to be the vertex where all of the arcs are uh, leaving, moving away from that vertex. And that is C. So C is the source vertex. There are no vertices no other vertices in this diagram where all the edges are leaving so you could look at all the others here one is two are going into it one's coming out d one coming in two going out uh, a you've got one coming in two coming out and so on c is the only one where they're all uh, directed away from it and part c the sink vertex well that's going to be e because all the edges are directed towards it so e is the sink vertex. Example two, the diagrams below show a possible flow for a capacitated directed network. So here's the original network and on this diagrams are the possible flows. Now what we could do is write down what those flows are on the original network. So Normally they'd be written like this. So I'll just put those on. So now we can move on to part A. Find the values of X and Y explaining your reasoning. So we'll start with X. Now we'll use the conservation condition that says that the flow into a vertex is equal to the flow out of a vertex. And I can see X flows in to D. So whatever flows into D needs to be equal to what flows out of D. And what flows into D, it's just X. So that's my flow in. And that has to equal what flows out of D. And um, the flow, so not the capacity, the flow is 2 plus 5. So that's nice and easy. That gives me X equals 7. OK, let's move on to finding Y. Now, Y flows into E. Now, since Y flows into the sink, I can uh, use the fact that the flow out of the source or the total flow out of the source is going to be equal to the total flow into the sink. OK, that will be the flow of the network. So for part B, we're going to work out the flow of this network. OK, so let's look at what is flowing out of C, the source. Now, remember the flow, not the capacity. So that's going to be 19 plus X. And we've just worked out X is 7. Plus the flow out here is 4. So the total flow out of the source is 30. 
Okay, so now we'll work out what the total flow into the sink is. Now that's going to be y plus 5 plus 11 plus 8. So uh, y plus 5 plus 11 plus 8. So that is y plus 24. So that's got to equal 30. Flow out of the source equals the flow into the sink. So that means that y is equal to 6. Okay, so just highlight those. And we'll move on to part B. And it says in part B, we need to list all of the saturated arcs. So those are going to be the arcs where the flow is equal to the capacity. So I'll just highlight those so I can see that one. They're the same, that one there. Uh, now we worked out X was seven, so CD isn't saturated. This one is, this one is, this one is here. And Y we worked out to six. So uh, the arc FE isn't saturated. So that will be the arcs AB, AE, D, E, D, F, and C, F. Part C, write down the value of the flow. Now we worked out the value of the flow in part A because we needed that to work out what Y was. And the total that's coming out of the source is 30. That's the same as what's going into the sink. Um, so y was 6, it's 30. So the flow is 30. And then lastly, what is the current flow along route CAE? So let's just highlight that. C to A. Oops, let's do it, highlight it rather than draw on it. So C A to E. Now to find the flow along a particular route, we look for the lowest value on that route. So although this has a flow of 19, this only has a flow of 11. So if we take this complete route from C to A to E, its flow is only 11. I know it says 19 here, but eight of those go to E. And these may not necessarily be, you know, if we think of them like water pipes, it may not necessarily be a single pipe. There may be multiple pipes along here. So imagine that it's a pipe that's taking 11 and, and 11 here. So the important bit of information is that whenever we look at the flow of a route, we're going to take the lowest value on that route that will give us the flow of the whole route. So the current flow along route CAE is just going to be 11. Example 3. The diagram shows a capacitated directed network or digraph. The number on each arc represents the capacity of that arc. The numbers in the circles represent an initial flow pattern. In part A, what we need to do is to uh, state a saturated arc. So we're looking for an arc where the capacity is equal to the flow. And the only one that I can see is here. The capacity is eight, the flow is eight. So that's completely saturated. So arc ET, B, we want to find the values of X, Y, and Z. So let's start with X. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna highlight the edges that go into A and the ones that come out of A, so I don't miss any out. And I know that uh, using the conservation condition, the flow into A must equal the flow out of A. Now the flow into A is 26. And the flow out of A is 11, um, sorry, 9 plus 10 plus X. 9 plus 10 plus X. So that's going to give me X plus 19 equals 26. So from that, I'm going to deduce that x equals 7. So we've got x. 
Now for y, we're going to use vertex B. So we know that the flow into B has got to equal the flow out of B. Now the flow into B is 10 plus 9. And the flow out of B is y plus 12. So that gives me y plus 12 equals 19. So that's going to give me y equals 7 as well. And now we'll calculate z. Now there are actually two ways I can calculate z. I can use the flow into vertex D, and that's going to be equal to the flow out of vertex D. That's one way of doing it. Now the flow into, and I mustn't forget this one as well, is going to be 4 plus x plus y. So that'd be 4 plus 7 plus 7. So that's going to be 18. So that means that z is also going to be 18 if I did it that way. Or another way I could do it is by looking at the flow of the network because z flows into the sink. So that means that these three here are going to be the same as what's coming out here. So the um, flow here is 36, 26 plus 10. So this is also going to be uh, 36. So I've got 10 plus 8 plus z equals 36. So maybe I'll write that down. So 10 plus 8 plus z equals 36. So that will give me z needs to equal 18. So whichever way I'll do it, I'll get the same result. We've got two choices. Now, I suppose using the source sync way of doing it means that if you've got x and y incorrect, it doesn't really matter. But if we've got x and y, one of those incorrect, using uh, the method where we're looking at um, what's going in and out of vertex D, if one of these is wrong, that means we're also going to get Z wrong. And if possible, we want to try and avoid using a previous answer in any type of mass question, just in case that answer is incorrect. Part C, state the value of the initial flow. So that's going to be 36. That's what we use to work out Z. So I'll just write that while working. If I look at what's coming out of the source, 26 plus 10. So it's going to be 36. Part D, what we need to do is to write down the capacity of the arc BE. So BE, I can see, is here. So the capacity of it is 14. And the current flow along BE, that's 12. So make sure you don't confuse capacity with flow. And then part E, what we need to do is to find the current flow along S, A, B, E, T. So let's just highlight that route. S, A, B, to E to T. And as we said before, the value of the flow is going to be the value of the lowest flow on that route. So we've got 26, 9, 12, and 8. The lowest flow along that route is 8. So the flow along the whole route is going to be 8. So it's always that minimum value along the whole of the route. So you should now be able to do exercise 3a on pages 76 to 78 of the textbook and it's just like a little short recap of uh, what we've done in this section.